In this video, we'll see how to use the index of a series to access and modify its elements in meaningful ways. Suppose we have the following series, x. If you wanted to access the ith element of the series, you might be inclined to use square bracket indexing notation, just like accessing elements from a Python list or NumPy array. And this would work. x square bracket 0 returns the first element, x square brackets 1 returns the second element, and so on. But looks can be deceiving, and what's happening here probably isn't what you think. x square brackets 0 actually returns the element or elements of the series with index label 0. In this case, that element happens to be the first element in the series, but if we mix up the index, which we can do by setting x.index equals a list of integers like this, now x square brackets 0 returns something totally different. So if you want to access the ith value of a series, you should use the series.iloc property. For example, x.iloc square brackets 0 returns the first element by position, and x.iloc square brackets 1 returns the second element by position. Throughout the course, I'll explicitly refer to these as index labels and these as index positions. With iloc, you can also use negative indexing. So x.iloc square brackets negative 1 returns the last element, and x.iloc square brackets negative 3 returns the third to last element. Another trick you can do is use slicing to return a subseries. For example, x.iloc square brackets 1 colon 4 colon 2 returns this two row subseries. In pseudocode, you could describe this as picking out the rows from position 1, inclusive, up to position 4, exclusive, stepping by 2. Notice here we get back a series object, whereas in the previous examples we got back scalars. And lastly, you could pass in a list, array, or series of integers to pick out specific rows of x. Let's take a step back and talk about the index. Every series has an index, and its purpose is to provide a label for each element in the series. As we've seen, when you make a series from scratch, it automatically gets an index of sequential values starting from zero. For example, here we make a series to represent the test grades of five students, you can see how the index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 automatically gets created. We can change the index pretty easily just by setting it equal to another array, list, or series of values with the proper length. The index values don't even need to be integers, and in fact they're often represented as strings since strings are more descriptive. For example, here we might say grades.index equals the list of strings Homer, Maggie, Grandpa, Bart, Lisa, Marge. Now, if we wanted to know what grade Bart got, we could do grades square brackets open quotes Bart, and we'd get back 89. Now, remember earlier when I said x square bracket 0 returns the value with index label 0, not the value at position 0? That's not entirely true. If you test it out on our grade series, grades square bracket 0 actually does give us the value at position 0. So what gives? The reason this works is because, in this case, our index consists of strings, but we requested the element with index 0, an integer. Pandas basically tries to be smart and figures, hey, this guy passed in an integer, but the index consists of strings. Therefore, he must be requesting the element at position 0. In the earlier example, our index data type was int, so when we requested x square bracket 0, pandas assumed we were searching for the value with label 0. While this behavior can be convenient and some people like it, I think it's a little bit confusing and obfuscates what's actually going on. So I highly recommend avoiding this square bracket notation. I think it leads to more problems than benefits. Instead, be explicit and use .iloc for positional indexing and .loc for label indexing. For example, if we want to pick out Bart's grade, we could do grade square brackets open quotes Bart but it's better if we explicitly do grades.loc square brackets open quotes Bart. And if we want to get the second value in the series, we could do grades square brackets 1, but it's better if we explicitly do grades.iloc square brackets 1. And just like with positional indexing, we can use slicing to access a range of elements by labeled index, which is really cool by the way. 
For example, we can say grades.loc square brackets Homer colon grandpa to get back every person's grade between Homer and grandpa, including both endpoints. Note that this type of slicing is slightly different from positional slicing, which excludes the right boundary. For example, if we do grades.iloc square brackets 0 colon 2, we get back two rows, not three. And just like with iloc, we can pass in a list, array, or series of labels into loc to retrieve multiple rows. Before we move on, we need to address a few more things about the index. You may have noticed that when you make a series from scratch, Pandas automatically gives you something called a range index. For example, if we make a series of 10 million random normal values like this, and then we print x's index, you can see it's a range index with start zero, stop 10 million, and step one. If we make a second series y, but this time we specify the index as an integer array from zero to 10 million, if we print Y's index, you can see it's something called an N64 index. From a high-level user's perspective, you can pretty much ignore this subtle difference. On the surface, these series behave the same way, but internally, these things are significantly different. Perhaps the most obvious difference is that the N64 index consumes more memory than the range index, since it literally stores all 10 million index values, whereas the range index basically stores three values, start, stop, and step. You can see this pretty clearly using the sys.getSizeOf function, noting that y is about twice the size of x. Less obvious is the fact that range index actually provides a performance boost over n64 index. When you ask for element 342, range index knows exactly where to go to fetch that data, just by using start and step size. But for n64 index, it's not that simple, since there's no guarantee that the index values jump by a fixed size or that they're in order, or that there's no duplicates. We'll cover this more later when we start joining data frames together. Now, one advantage N64 index has over range index is that it allows for duplicate index values. For example, you can make a series alpha like this, which has some repeated index values. And then when you do things like ask for the element with label zero, you'll get back every element with label zero, now that we know how to access data from a series using an index, overriding data is pretty straightforward. For example, if you have the series foo with values 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, with index labels A, B, C, D, E, and you want to change the second element to 200, you can do foo.iloc square brackets 1 equals 200. If you want to set the first, second, and third elements to 99, you can do foo.iloc square brackets and then pass in a list of indices like 0, 1, 2, and set that equal to 99. Or you could use slicing, like foo.iloc square brackets colon 3 equals 999. This is like saying select every element from the start of the series up to but excluding position 3, and then update those values to be 999. And you can do the same exact operations using the index labels with foo.loc. What if you wanted to overwrite the entire series with a new set of values like the ones in this array? Your first instinct might be to overwrite the entire foo variable like this, but then you'd lose foo's index. Instead, use slicing to select and overwrite all of foo's values without overwriting its index. Now, suppose you have these two series, x and y, each with four values whose indices are different but share a few common values, namely 0, 2, and 3. What do you think will happen if we say x.loc square brackets list 0, 1, and we set that equal to y? This one's a bit strange to get used to, but when you see the result, it's pretty clear what's happening. Panda starts by searching x for the values with index labels 0 and 1. Then it looks for matching labels in y to use to overwrite x. Since x's label 1 doesn't match any elements in y, pandas assigns it the value nan. And since nan only exists as a floating point value in numpy, pandas cast the entire series from ints to floats. We'll talk more about nan in a future video, 
but basically it's a special value to represent missing or invalid data. Also, note that we could do the same exact thing using slicing. For example, if we do x.iloc square brackets colon 2 equals y, pandas selects the first two values from x and then searches y for replacement values with matching index labels. If we try to do this using a numpy array on the right hand side, we'll get an error because when the right hand side is a numpy array, pandas tries to assign each element of the right hand side to the left hand side on an element by element basis. And in this case, we're trying to replace two values with four values. If the numpy array on the right hand side is the same length as the series subset on the left hand side, this would work. But note that the array elements get assigned to the series subset by position, not index label. 